It's a real pleasure to be here today. I just want to quickly introduce my team that are going to be talking to you. Um, I'm Joe Hayes. I'm a second year apprentice and I'm currently studying a level three MVQ electrical course at Campbell College. I'm Jack Stevens. I've just started my sixth year of HNC doing mechanical engineering. Uh, and I'm Tobias Sydenham and I'm doing my uh, level three in furniture studies and I'm a joiner. It really falls to me just to set the tone a little bit with apprenticeships and a little bit about the state of the nation really because um, there's a lot going on and I'm sure I'm preaching to the converted um, and you wouldn't think there's any problems when you look around you know, the number of people in this room. Um, in 2015, the Cameron government made a very profound statement in so much as uh, uh, skills was the biggest crisis to hit this country since um, the Cold War. It's a big statement to make. And in doing that, they said, what we're going to do about it is we're going to set three million, or three million target for apprentices by um, 2020. It's, it's not without its problems. And I think one of the things that we need to explore today is um, why these guys are doing what they're doing and how we're addressing skills. So recruitment nationally is down. And like I said, that's hard to believe when you look around this room. But recruitment is down. Um, depends on where you are and what your industry is, but uh, it's an issue. It's an issue for, for the country as a whole. And some of that is down to demographics. So yeah, people moving around, and uh, actually there was a real drop in, I think, year 10s and 11s for a couple of years, and it's beginning to come back up again around 2020. So you will see a dip in, in certain age groups and, and the numbers in those age groups. Another major problem is, is IAG, information okay. advice and guidance. And that's been a problem whenever I go into schools and, or talk to apprentices when they start, what kind of advice did you get? They usually give me the same answer, and I'm sure you would tell me the same, that not a lot really, until I sort of knew someone who knew somebody. And it's something I'm trying to address um, regionally, feeding in nationally. And the last thing, and I'm sure you're all familiar with it, and some of you may even be doing it yet, is standards, um, new apprenticeship standards. As of July 20, or the 20th of July, I should say, next year, apprenticeship frameworks will cease to exist. And that means if there isn't a standard to replace it, we can't carry on. So I'm doing an awful lot of work um, with different agencies, uh, colleges, the provider, to try and make sure that we have standards to replace. And the problem with this is that as experienced employers, and I'm sure like us, you will, when you get used to something and you know what you can do, you stick with it. So we don't like change. We like to know what's coming. We like to know what's being replaced with, but we don't like uncertainty. And it's a real problem for us. Eventually, um, it could be a good thing, but it's this period of change that we're going through. And it's about us sticking together and developing good, solid career opportunities. I was talking to our director this morning about a meeting he had about how shipwrights are actually trying to set grants for smaller organizations to be able to have apprentices. And I think it's a brilliant, it's a brilliant idea from you know, a forward-thinking um, group of people. And it brings me really to my last real point is, and I'm sure you guys do the same, but we get out to schools, we go to a lot of events, I think every week. We see that as crucial for sowing the seed and making sure that people know that there are opportunities. And earlier this year, we did our first careers event in a junior school in Falmouth. And at first I thought, should we be doing this? But actually, yes, we should. We should be sowing those seeds. We should be getting out there. We should be talking to people. And these guys and the rest of my apprentices at Penn do a fantastic job. You know, they go out quite often, it's an all-day event, and they go out and they talk to people and they get a lot of interest going. So I'm going to be quiet for a minute, I will chip in, but I think I'm going to hand over to Joe first, who's just going to really start by uh, explaining what inspired him to come into the sector. So um, starting out from doing some basic engineering and product design in school, um, I'd obviously heard um, how Jack had got on. Um, because we both went to the same school, he was a few years above me, and all the teachers were always saying, oh, he's done so well at Penn And I came to do a week of work experience, and it's basically five days away from school. I started off in electrical, and then joinery, and engineering, and fabrication, and, and then I think I did painting as well. So just seeing how many options there is for you to split off into is like a really big thing for it, really. So that's quite inspiring to go and see that. We build such a unique product, so it's only fair that we have such a unique uh, apprenticeship program. I'm working on a 42-meter motor yacht that I've been on for the last 12 months, and I think what's so good is going on a boat right from the start and working through it through the whole whole time. It's nice for me now being in my sixth year, doing my HNC, still learning, 
um, but actually taking more of a lead role in things. So I've been working on a fuel system for well, about eight months, and it's nice to see something that started from scratch and now is just going through the commissioning process now, and something that I've started just basically leading it and going through and seeing the final product, which is really good. I'm in my fourth year, so I'm just starting to get to that point now, so I get more responsibility, which is nice, which is yeah. something that I look forward I to. Think, I think also it's all the extracurriculum that we get to do, obviously, like Steve was saying. In the first year, I think you do six or seven Saturday sessions, That's and true. each time they try and set it up with a different department that you wouldn't normally get to uh, sort of understand, so like naval architecture and... Um, we've done a couple of um, quite fun exercises as well. We've done raft building, where it's all about your like team management and who can like lead a group and seeing what you can do like economically if you can work out of um, how much money you get for the materials and yeah, it's, it's, it was really good in the first year. I think there's a lot to do. I think the best thing about Pendennis really is all the opportunities you get to offered. I've been lucky enough to work away in Parma and Villanova twice during my apprenticeship. I've taken part on the Queen Silver Medal. I went on a tool ship and sailed from Falmouth to Southampton. So it's all the extra bits that put us aside from everywhere, everywhere else. Like I said, it's, we don't do anything the same twice. So it's nice that yeah, we're so different and coming to these events, it's nice to see how we're different from maybe how others do it and how maybe other companies take inspiration from what we're doing. Um, and use that in our, their apprenticeship programmes as well. Guys, could you sort of talk about the highs and lows a little bit as well? The highs is obviously getting to do all of this and being such a big group and everybody, like each of us, we can all share all the experiences that we've had. Obviously, we're in different years, but Jack has been through all of it and Tobias has been through like most of it now and I'm just starting, so I've got all that to look forward to. Everyone that does takes the apprenticeship route rather than the standard go to college and then university. I think it's just that people don't really want to sit in a classroom, they actually want to get hands on and learn actually right. doing the job rather than doing that. So I, I, I would say one of the lows is having to do your college work, but we all know that it has to, has to be done and that's the only way that you're going to progress. I'd say that, that's one of the low things, yeah. thinking, oh, I've yeah, college like, tomorrow. Mm. With doing the HNC, it's, um, you need that to go up through management, which is what I aspire to do. It's so important to have, to understand all the other trades as well. So even in your first year, you go through the offices and everything, so it, you really get a good feel of how the other trades work and how when you go into joinery or paint, how delicate the things are. And if you're carrying a pipe through, you need to take more care and mm. things like that. So you do get a proper feel of the whole yard. So that, that's another high, I'd, I'd say. Yeah, and for me, the highs um, are just producing a finished thing. Like, as I'm sure all of you didn't know, when you finish something that you've worked hard and long from, and the lows are obviously the bits where it goes wrong, those bits that make the sort of high part of when you've finally get something and you're proud of it and you're sort of thinking, oh, yeah, I actually quite did quite a good job there. Yeah. Nice to um, have pride in your work. Yeah. As the slides are going on, you'll have seen some uh, slides with headings on, things like the Community Week and things. So, as I said before, one of the key objectives for us is us getting our name out there, not just because we're Pendennis, but because we want to see young people seeing other apprentices and seeing the kind of things that they can get involved with, you know, from whether it's coming to the shipwrights or whether it's working on a local project it's important that people see us out in the community doing things. Um, I think it's important as well that we sort of talk about with, with Jack a little bit about the opportunities when um, you finish your apprenticeship. He's already alluded to the fact he's doing his HNC at the moment through Cornwall College. Um, and that's important for us that he continues that development. But we also have opportunities like the Management Development Forum, which we've pretty much designed ourselves. You can achieve an Institute of Leadership and Management award but you'll also do a whole lot of other stuff built in context of Pendennis, which for our leaders and our aspiring leaders is, is crucial to us because we want these guys to have long-term careers and, and to develop themselves. We've had people that go into project managers, we've had people that go into trade management. There's all kinds of opportunities, it's down to the individual. Can I invite Blue on from British Marine?
The Training and Development Award goes to Pendennis Shipyard, and Blue Davis, Head of Training at British Marine, is delighted to present the award to Steve Hancock, the Training Manager at Pendennis Shipyard. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Amongst uh, many other training commitments, uh, they have a fantastic apprenticeship programme of around 80 apprentices, ensuring the business has skills and knowledge for a long, sustainable future. Gentlemen, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.